About five years ago, we noted a common group of symptoms among some of our infant patients. Extreme irritability, vomiting or spitting up, enlarged livers, hoarse cries and rapid shallow respirations, but with clear breath sounds, except that occasionally a child had wheezing. The illness did not improve with antibiotic treatment. Out of desperation, we tried vitamin B complex injections containing vitamin B1 for a comatose child with these same symptoms who had stopped urinating. The next day, the mother did not return to the clinic because she said the child was all better. We had discovered the cause of the problem, a vitamin B1 deficiency. B1 is a critical factor in the ATP cycle. That is, it is used to produce glucose. Without it, the heart cannot pump blood adequately to the body, and heart failure develops. We continue to see this heart failure syndrome in 2006, and it seems in increasing numbers. But why are so many babies deficient in vitamin B1? What is the cause of the deficiency? Is it simply a lack of vitamin B1 intake? Certainly, the widespread advent of the rice milling machine about five years ago has contributed to lower intakes of B1. The bran on the rice, rich in vitamin Bs, is completely removed. Hand pounding rice in the traditional way does not do this. Is it possible there is yet another cause? Could the mothers of these exclusively breastfed babies also be inhaling or eating chemicals that destroy their vitamin B1? Chewing betel nut and eating raw fish paste are both proven factors in decreasing B1 levels in the body. Since none of the mothers on this film have these two risk factors, is there something else that might be decreasing their B1 levels as well? I'd like to introduce you to some of the children who present to the Rural Government Clinic in Svai Churum Commune of Maesong District in Prevang Province of Cambodia. This five and a half week old infant presented to the clinic on a Tuesday with severe irritability and crying, shallow breathing, and according to the mother, had a stuffy nose, watery diarrhea, and vomiting after nursing for several days. The temperature is 37, respirations were 66 and the pulse 142. The baby has moderate wheezing in the lungs. The liver is enlarged. The upper line marks the rib cage where the liver should be. The lower line marks the lower edge of the liver. Several hours after intramuscular injections of B-complex, each injection containing 33 milligrams of vitamin B1, the child is happier, respirations are 62. The child continues to spit up. On day two, Wednesday, the liver is significantly smaller, down three centimeters. Wheezing and crying are less, and the mother reports the child is sleeping better. Respirations are 52, and the pulse 120. On day three, Wednesday, the liver continues to decrease in size, down two centimeters. The lungs are almost completely clear of wheezing. No medicines for asthma have been given, although antibiotics were given to this child and to all the other children with rapid respirations as well. This baby's mom reported that this little five-week-old guy has been crying a great deal and nursing poorly. There is no wheezing, vomiting, or decreased urinary output, but the baby has rapid breathing and a hoarse cry. This dysphonia is caused by an enlarged heart putting pressure on the recurrent laryngeal nerve, resulting in hoarseness. The liver is again enlarged, down two centimeters, indicating right-sided heart failure. The baby's mom complains of numbness in her legs and has a smooth tongue, both signs of deficiency of several of the B vitamins. Before the first B injection, respirations were 68 and the pulse was 166. After three IM injections and three hours, the respirations were 44 and the pulse 140. The child was afebrile before and after the injections both. MSG intake is almost one kilo a month for their large family 
and tiger balm is used three times a week on the baby. This baby is exactly one month old. Mom says she cries hoarsely, has difficulty breathing, and is spitting up every evening. She is not nursing well and, according to Mom, has a fever. She is peeing normally. The mother has applied a charcoal cross on the forehead, fearful the child might die. Temperature is 36.8, respirations are 58, and the pulse is 168 on exam. She is hoarse when she cries. Respirations are rapid, though the lungs are clear. Her color is gray, and the liver is once again enlarged, down three centimeters. After two injections and about three hours later, her respirations are 50, and her pulse down to 140. Her color is improving. The mother, once again, has no known risk factors for developing B1 deficiency other than polished rice but she rubs tiger balm on the belly of the little girl twice a day. MSG intake is about 350 grams a month for her family. The last three of these babies, plus one other baby of three weeks, presented for their first visit to the clinic on the same morning. Why this epidemic of vitamin B1 deficiency? The B1 intake is certainly low. But textbooks state that children with this syndrome usually present in the second and third months of life, especially the ninth, tenth, and eleventh weeks. Why are we seeing such advanced cases at three, four, and five weeks? We suspect that something other than low intake is the main cause, with a toxin that drastically decreases thiamine levels in the body. B1 is a sulfur-based nutrient and binds readily to a number of heavy metals. More research needs to be done on possible toxin exposure, such as those that might be inhaled by sleeping next to large car batteries, which are used for electricity in rural homes, the use of tiger balm, the intake of MSG, fish paste, or fish sauce. Some of these substances were not in widespread use 25 years ago when many of the first studies were done in Thailand. And some of these food substances, which were in use then, are probably now much different with the increased acceptability of food additives. For example, many fish paste producers in Cambodia now add Clorox to the fermenting fish. Whatever the cause, something needs to be done to prevent needless deaths due to vitamin B1 deficiency heart failure. Otherwise, the infant mortality rates in Cambodia may greatly increase to unacceptable levels once again.